All right, welcome to Algebra 1B Credit 4. Um, in this credit, we're going to be talking about quadratic equations and modeling. And specifically, the big focus on this credit is actually on factoring quadratic equations to find solutions. So, um, if this is your first time even attempting algebra, that means nothing to you. So, let's just jump in uh, to the credit. We're going to start by talking about some of the prerequisite skills that we need before we can actually start factoring uh, quadratic equations and so and so here we are um, with question number one we're going to learn we're going to do a crash course on exponents because uh, you will need to understand how exponents work when, when dealing with quadratic expressions and equations so um, let's take a look at the example first 8 to the power of 5 times 8 to the power of negative 2 now we're not going to delve too much into exponent uh, operations, but here's one thing that you should know, right? This part of the exponent, or this part of the term is called the base. And this little itty bitty number here, that's, that's the exponent, okay? And so the thing that we want to know, um, that, that is important uh, to know about the exponent, um, is that the exponent tells you how many times you're going to multiply the number by itself. So specifically, 8 to the power of 5 means 8 times 8 times 8 times 8 times 8, or 1, 2, 3, 4. You're multiplying 8 to itself 5 times, right? That's, that's specifically what we're doing here. So, um, but um, just cutting to the chase, here's a shortcut. When you have the same base, right, as these two terms do, 8 to the power of 5, a to the power of negative 2, and you're multiplying them, when you're doing that, you can actually just add the exponents. So 5 plus negative 2 gives you 3. So this is much better than 8 to the power of 5, and then think about 8 to the power of 2. 8 to the power of 3 is literally just 8 times 8 times 8. 1, 2, 3 times, therefore the exponent. And if you punch into the calculator, you do get 512. Now, I went through that really quickly. Like I said, this is a crash course on exponents now, so um, if that made no sense to you, uh, pause the video, rewind, and, and take a take a listen again. Or, or go find a Khan Academy video or something that talks about exponents, cause, or ask your math teacher, uh, because um, I can't spend too much time on this. So, at least uh, in this video, we're going to assume that you have mastered this skill already. So, let's practice this skill. Okay, question number one, we have the same base here, three and three. So, all we're going to do is we're just going to add those exponents. So, seven minus three equals four, therefore this is like three to the power of four, which is also three times three times three times three, one, two, three, four times, and so when you do that and you punch on the calculator, you should get 81, okay? Question number two, uh, seven to the power of seven, and seven to the power of negative five, they have the same base, so we're just going to add these two numbers together, seven minus five gives us two, so this is technically seven to the power of two which is 7 times 7, which is 49. Okay, question number 3. Look at this, we have 3, and they all have the same base. So all we're doing is we're adding these numbers. So 9 minus 4 minus 5, that actually gets a 0. And like I said, crash course, when you have something with power 0, it's just 1. It always is. Now, uh, explaining why it's just one is another maybe 30 minutes into itself, and I don't want to do that, so um, just know that any power zero is one. One million to the power of zero is one. One billion to the power of zero is still one. Infinity to the power of zero is still one, so that's all you need to know for now. All right, uh, so there's a crash course in exponents. Let's talk about algebraic expressions. So when we have two binomials like this, x plus seven, x minus 3, um, we're going to learn how to multiply these. Now, if this is your second attempt at algebra, you might have learned the FOIL method. Um, I actually despise the FOIL method. Okay, despise is a little bit strong, but uh, I don't like the FOIL method um, because I feel like there's a much more intuitive method that also helps us uh, in the future when we're going to be factoring these quadratic expressions. So instead of FOIL, right, which I'm not going to do, is we're going to use the box method, right? And the box method is called the box method because you literally draw a box and then you take the two binomial terms. So in this case, x plus 7, I'm just going to write on top x and 7 and then take the second binomial term there, x minus 3, 
Okay, and notice how I wrote that, right? Um, and then we're going to multiply out uh, those those terms there and see what we get in the box. So, so x times x is going to give us x squared. x times 7 is going to give us 7x. And then x times negative 3 is going to give us negative 3x. And then negative 3 times negative 7 is going to give us negative 21. And then we're just going to combine like the well, well, first of all, let's write this one term first, x squared. And we're going to combine the like terms right here in the diagonal. 7x and negative 3x will combine for a positive 4x, since it's 7 minus 3, essentially. And then the last one, the negative 21, is just going to hang out there. So this is what we get, and sure enough, just like the FOIL method, we should get the same answer right here, x squared uh, plus 4x minus 21. Now, as far as why I prefer this method to the FOIL method is because um, with the FOIL method, there's a lot of lines, and, and it's not too much to think about when you have two binomial terms, but um, if you have two trinomial terms, right, if you have one, two, one, two, three, multiplied by another uh, four, five, six, right, there, this gets really super confusing, right, where do, where do you draw the line with the, so anyway, too many lines. I prefer the box method um, for, for that reason, and so uh, if you like using FOIL, go ahead and use FOIL, I'm not going to do that. Um, and you'll also realize why I don't do that later on when we uh, learn how to, to factor these quadratic equations, which is essentially where to go from here and here, that's what factoring is. Anyway, um, let's, let's use the box method on these uh, as practice. And so, take as much time as you need, pause the video if you need to. Um, but anyway, let, let's get started. So let's, we're going to draw that box again. And you might be asking yourself, how do you know what kind of box to draw, right? If it's one, two terms, and this is one, two terms, right? You're going to draw a two by two box, okay? So we have a two by two box here. So I'm going to take this, oops, I'm going to take this x minus four and, and write on top here, x minus four. And then this x plus five is going to go on the side here, x plus five. And I don't write the plus because it's positive five. Let's go ahead and multiply these x times x is x squared. And then uh, x times negative 4 is going to give me negative 4x. And then x times 5 is going to give me 5x. And then 5 times negative 4 is going to give me negative 20. And so let's go ahead and write it out now. The x squared goes in front, x squared. And then 5x minus 4x gets me just 1x, or sorry, 1 just a positive one x. We don't write that one, it's redundant. So that's just plus x and lastly minus twenty, way at the end there. Okay, so x squared plus x minus twenty. And that is our answer. Okay. Uh, question number nine. Okay, again let's draw a two by two box since it's we're multiplying two binomial terms. X minus nine here and then x minus six here. Okay, let's multiply that out. X times X gets us X squared. X times negative, X times negative 9 gets us negative 9X. Uh, negative 6 times X gets us negative 6X. And then negative 6 times negative 9 gets us to positive 54. Uh, and let's write out what we have, X squared. And then we're going to combine these two, negative 6 and negative 9, combined to form negative 15X. And then that last term there is 54. So X squared minus 15x plus 54. Question 10. All right, so here we have another two binomials, uh, binomial expressions there. We have 2x minus 3, and then 2x plus 3. And so let's go ahead and multiply these out. 2x and 2x gets us to 4x squared. 2x times negative 3 gets us to negative 6x. Uh, th 3 times 2x gets us 6x. And then lastly, 3 times negative 3 gets us to negative 9. All right, and this one's interesting because, okay, let's just go ahead and write this out first. 4x squared, and then 6 and negative 6 are going to cancel each other out, right? Yeah, the same thing, 1 minus 1 is 0, 6, x minus 6x six, is also 0, so we're not even going to write it. We're just going to write the last term there, negative 9 at the end. So here's our answer, 4x squared minus 9. Okay, and lastly, question number 11. All right, the, we'll draw the box out again, and we have 3x minus 2. 2x and 5 on the side there. 
So 2x times 3x gets us 6x squared. 2x times negative 2 gets us negative 4x. 5 times 3x gets us 15x. And then 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And so let's combine these terms. Or at least, uh, write, write out the first term first before we combine 6x squared. And then let's combine these. 15x minus 4x gets us to positive 11x because 15 minus 4 is 11. And then uh, the straggler there, the, the 10 minus 10 is our answer. 6x squared plus 11x minus 10. Okay. All right, so that was that page, page 7. Let's jump into page 8. Here are a couple more um, prerequisite skills you need to know. Here, um, they're going to give you a value for b, and you're going to do something that seems kind of random. You're going to plug it into this into this uh, weird expression here, or this term here, b over 2 squared, right? Right now it means nothing to you, but later on when we actually start learning how to complete the square, it will mean something. But for now, all we need to do is be able to procedurally understand that we're just going to plug this in here and uh, see what pops out. Okay, so in this case, or let me, let me go through the example first. Maybe we should have done that. So b equals 18, so we're going to plug that in here. And so instead of b, you're going to plug in 18, right? Because that's where we get that. So 18 divided by 2 squared. Right? 18 divided by 2 is 9. And then you're going to square that. So 9 squared is 81. So we're going to do that for, tw for uh, question number 4 here. We're going to plug 24 into this thing here. Right? So we're going to write 24 over 2 squared. So let's do what's inside the parentheses first. 24 divided by 2 is 12. And then don't forget the square, which we got right there. 12 squared is 144. Okay? Again, it seems a little arbitrary, but it'll, it'll make sense when you get to the part of the credit where we're actually completing, completing the square. All right, let's do the same thing again. We're going to plug this B, these, this is B value, into this weird... Um, this weird function that they've given us. 10 over 2, or 10 divided by 2 squared. So negative 10 divided by 2 is what? Negative 5 squared. And when we do that, negative 5 squared is 25. Since it's negative 5 times negative 5. Okay. Question number 6. Let's put that into this uh, function again. B over 2 squared. Oh, why do I just, why do I just write B? Uh, I need to write 3 over 2 squared. And, and in this case, 3 over 2 gives us 1.5. And I guess you can work with a decimal, but uh, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to square this. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. And so if we're leaving in terms of... Um, if we leave it in terms of a uh, fraction, you could do that, or you can make it a, a mixed number. Where's that? 2 and 1 fourths, right? So either one of these answers is correct. All right. Question number 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so these are going to seem confusing because you're going to learn how to factor, and yet they want you to factor this um, using these arbitrary rules. So um, not my favorite way to teach this. Because uh, it's super confusing if you don't understand what you're doing. But um, because we have to do these problems anyway, let's just go with it. What they want you to do is to be able to see, right, that this is a perfect square. And, and again, if this is your first time, you might be like, what are you talking about? How the heck is that a perfect square? It looks nothing like a square. It looks like letters and numbers, right? Well, you just need to fit it into this form. A squared plus 2AB plus B squared, where this is the A term and this is... Uh, anyway... So, uh, let's figure this out, right? We have this, if we look at the actual problem we're using, x squared plus 14x plus 49, x squared, right? You can break x squared down into, the square root of x squared is just x, the square root of 49 is 7, right? So this becomes our a, this becomes our b, and then all we're going to do is plug those in. a goes here and a goes here, and then b goes here and, and b goes here and then as long as you have two pluses right you get x plus seven and you have since you have two of them it becomes x plus seven squared I, okay so even as i say it it sounds so confusing and if this is your first time i can imagine how confusing this must be um so just bear with me for a second because when we actually learn how to factor it'll make much more sense um what i'm saying but for now, um, the curriculum writers have, in, their, in all their wisdom, decided that this is the best way to do it, uh, which, um, honestly, I'm going to disagree with, but uh, it is what it is. So let's, let's deal with it. X, 
the square the square root of x squared is just x. The square root of 36 is just 6. Or if we're, if we're being um, mathematically correct, it's actually plus or minus 6. But let's just go with the positive version of it. And so here, we're going to write x and 6, and then x and 6. And I haven't written down the operations yet. But here's what you need to know. It's going to be x minus 6, x minus 6. How do I know that, right? Because Especially because... Look, these, these actually say plus. Why, are, why is this one going to end up being minus, right? Uh, and it's because of this minus sign right here. I just know from experience that they're both... The factor form of this is going to have two uh, minus operations here. And if you don't believe me, we can actually do the box method again, and, which I will, um, just for the sake of um, explaining this real quick. And x times x is x squared. x times negative 6 is negative 6x. Negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. And, and again, if we write it out, x squared um, minus 12x plus 36. And, and sure enough, that's that's what we got right here, right? So anyhow, uh, the example doesn't give us how to do this. So I feel like it's unfair. So just, just follow along. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, this one has two pluses, so it'll fit the example uh, much better. But let's think about this. What's our A term? What's our B term? Uh, square root of x squared is just x. Square root of 11, 121 is 11. And so what we're going to end up with is x plus 11 times x plus 11, which you can re actually rewrite as uh, x plus 11 squared, since you have two of them. Okay, so that one fits the example much, much better. All right. Uh, let's look at this one. Oh, look at this. Plus and plus. So what's our A term and what's our B term? Well, the square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 9 is 3. And so it's just going to be 2x plus 3 squared. Let's just jump straight to the, the shortcut. Why not, right? We, I mean, it's already pretty messed up problem. So let's, let's go from there. Um, A term is going to be 4x. So the square root of 16 is 4. And Square root of x squared is x, and then we got square root of 25 is 5. Oh, and look at this. It's a minus, so we're going to end up with two minus signs, just like this first one here. So this is our answer, 4x minus 5 squared. 